Hello all, welcome to Selenium Python training series. In this session, I'm going to cover the software testing basics which are required for learning Selenium. As part of the previous category that is introduction to Selenium, the last topic was all about the predict sites that are required for learning Selenium, right? So these are the complete list of predict sites which are required for learning Selenium. As part of this here, I'm going to cover the software testing basics guys. This will not take so much of time. Okay. I uh, just a uh, high level understanding of what exactly software testing is and how it need to be performed manually. Okay. Why we have to go for automation testing will be covered at a high level for you guys. It's not an in-depth topic. Okay. So you don't have to learn software testing in detail. Okay. So if you already have the knowledge of software testing, you can skip this video guys. Okay. If you already know what is software testing, how, how uh, software testers perform testing manually and why people go for uh, automation testing. Okay. Uh, beside having this manual testing. Okay. All these things, if you already know, you can skip this video and go to the next video. So in this session, let me cover the software testing basics for the ones who are new to software testing. So you don't have to learn software testing in depth for learning Selenium guys, whatever I'm going to cover in this session will be enough for you. So let's get started. So first, what is software testing? So let me explain what is software testing. What is software testing? I'll divide this software testing into two parts. One is software. Other one is testing. Okay. This two, if you combine software and testing, if you combine, it will become software testing, right? So what is software testing to understand? I need to explain separately what is software and what is testing. First, I'll explain what is testing. Then I'll go for software. Okay. So what is testing? If you have to explain testing separately, okay, without software kind of thing in real world also, we can apply this. Okay. Let's say, let's take a very simple example. Let's say you as a person, you have purchased a TV. Okay. For your house, you have purchased a TV. Okay. A new TV or television you have purchased for your house. Nowadays, we are getting some digital TVs, right? Where you can access YouTube and all those stuff in the TV itself. Okay. Such kind of TV you purchased. Okay. And uh, you are a normal user who has purchased this user for a uh, purchase this particular TV for some amount. Now, what as a user after this TV got installed, some uh, the company related people came to your house. Okay. After you ordered the TV. Okay. Some company people, uh, you have configured the, you know, uh, once you got the TV, right. You were asked to call these people. Okay. So you call those people of the company of this particular TV and those people came to your house and they have successfully installed TV at your home. And, uh, now it's your turn. Okay. As a user, you purchase the TV. You are the one who is going to use a TV, right? After the TV has been purchased and installed and set up by this uh, company people at your house, you, uh, you as a user has to use this TV. So immediately what you will check first, if I'm not wrong, you will turn on the TV. Okay. Turn on the TV guys. Okay. The TV may have some buttons here on the physical buttons. You will try to turn on the TV. You will also check, uh, turning it off, turn off the TV. Or you will check some buttons on this TV, like uh, volume buttons. Okay. Volume buttons you will check. Channel changing buttons you will check. Chan you will try to change the channels. You will try to increase and reduce the volume. Okay. And when the TV is turned on, you will check uh, whether the display is coming properly or not. And also as a user, okay, you will check, are there any damages? Okay. When the TV got delivered to you, are there any damages on the TV? Like uh, some small scratches or something may be there on the TV. You will check whether any such kind of stuff is there on the TV. Okay. Any damages are there as a basic you are, you, user you are checking it or not only that guys, you, uh, you will, uh, a TV will come with a remote control. You will take that remote control and, you know, will perform the same operations like turn on the TV with the help of remote control, turn off the TV with the help of remote control, increase the volume and decrease the volume with the help of remote control. Okay. We'll try to change the channels with the help of remote control and many other stuff. The basic things that you need 
okay the uh, whatever the main requirement why you have purchased or ordered this tv at your home right that basic things will check okay if there are any uh, no problems with this basic operations you are happy you are a happy customer okay you don't worry about anything but do you think a normal user has tested the tv with the basic checks like this as the testing of the tv is completed no guys okay here, normal user is also checking whether TV is working fine, but we cannot say this particular thing as testing because the basic needs of the user are served and user is happy. Doesn't mean that these are enough for testing the TV. So, how a software tester is going to, uh, I mean, not software tester, how a tester is going to, here only testing we are talking about, right? I'm not talking about software testing, that's why I'm saying. If, a, if there's a tester, the one who is to going to check whether TV is working fine in all the varieties, okay? So this tester, unlike the general user who is actually checking the TV, uh, whether to check whether the TV is solving the basic purpose or not, but this tester is uh, different from the normal user, guys, okay? So how the tester is going to perform uh, or check this TV, working of this TV, tester will go beyond whatever that you imagine, guys, okay? Tester. You see, I'll, I'll explain, I'll just uh, give you some checks that tester may do that normal users generally don't do that in real time. Tester may put a scale on the TV, okay, may put a scale on the TV and measure the height and width to see whether the uh, as per the uh, as per the details given by the TV company, okay, the height and length, height and uh, width of the TV is matching or not, tester will check, but the normal user will blindly go with what the company was uh, company is saying okay that the normal user generally don't put a scale on the tv and measure the you know how many inches the tv is uh, that uh, normal user will not measure and the tester will check the resolution of the tv uh, kind of quality visual quality that need to that is expected is happening or not all these internal things okay tester may even open the tv and check whether all the chips and uh, chip boards and everything are uh, assembled properly or not. Okay. Tester may uh, put this TV in different temperatures. Okay. Because uh, this TV need to be sold uh, at different areas. Okay. Different locations in the country. Uh, some locations of the country will be in cold temperature. Uh, the, some locations of the country will be in high temperature. Okay. Uh, and uh, different seasons will be there. So, the tester will test this TV in different seasons. Testers may uh, run uh, use this TV for continuously like one month without turning it off to see what's the endurance of the TV, like uh, whether how how many days the TV can non-stop work without any problems. Okay, like that many things the tester will do, guys. A normal person or normal user who is going to purchase uh, who purchase the TV will not do. Okay, this TV will have a lot of input ports and output ports, and all these things will be each and every small thing about the TV will be checked by the tester guys. Okay. So this is the major difference guys. Okay. So I, I still remember like, uh, when I, uh, you know, when I joined the company as a software tester, right. My role was given a software tester and I started testing the applications and all, I know what I'm doing, but, uh, outside the company, right. People don't know what is software testing. Okay. I went to one of my relatives, uh, house and, uh, the relative has asked me, okay. So you have joined the company as a software tester. So what do you do? Then I said, okay, I'll, I was unable to explain properly at that time because I was a fresher at the time. I was not able to explain the things properly. We test the application to see whether the application is working fine or not. I have said, okay, then what is the difference? Okay. Uh, we also do that, right? We also use the application, uh, and kind of, but, uh, what is that major thing that you do? It's, it's not making any difference to me. They were saying at the time. So since, uh, it's been very, uh, good number of years I have completed, uh, I worked in software testing field and uh, I'm very good now in software testing. Now I know that, okay. The proper answer would have been, okay. As a normal user, you will not use the application proper. For example, you can explain something it's instead of TV, you can explain something like this, like Amazon application. Okay. So how do you do, how do you test the application as software tester? Uh, uh, the Amazon application you will open and will not simply use the Amazon application to uh, purchase some items online, right? But rather you will check each and every functionality of Amazon that normal user will not do guys. Okay. Normal user purpose is to search for the product. Okay. Uh, in the Amazon or whatever the application 
and uh, add that particular product to the cart and purchase it okay using some one of the option like credit card or uh, net banking or whatever it is the customer feels that the application is working fine but the tester is not like that guys the tester will okay go through all the ways that the application uh the possibility is there okay that general user will not go through such kind of routes okay maybe randomly by mistake the users may go in some routes which are very rare okay but most of the people don't uh, go in that routes guys okay so tester is a kind of person right uh, here complete checking need to be done okay yes this small amount of uh, checking is not enough guys complete uh, dedicated and focused way of you know checking need to be done okay in the form of testing and that's what how the tester is different from a normal user okay so in case of this tv normal user will only check few functionalities okay yeah, maybe uh, if the user is very extreme right uh, the user may use some user guide and you know check each and everything okay but not more than that but tester is someone right who will check uh, this particular tv or whatever it is okay in depth in all the ways possible okay so going out of the box and testing the things, okay, the tester will do, but normal user will not do, okay, won't do that. Fine. So when does a tester perform testing? Another difference between this uh, user and the tester is, okay, the user will only perform this kind of small amount of checking after the TV is delivered to, to the user, right? The TV is already there in the market, the user has purchased it and then user is checking. But here the tester is somewhat different guys before the TV got released into the market only the tester is checking the TV. Okay. Before the TV is put for sale before that only the tester. Okay. After the tester verifies everything, then only after the tester verifies everything and confirms that the TV is working well with all these checks, then only the TV will be released into the market. What if the tester has not tested it and have the TV has been released into the market with some bucks? Some issues what will happen when the user purchases it user will find that uh, in the regular use of that uh, tv and the user will be unhappy and will return the tv will never purchase uh, another tv from the brand because uh, the user is unhappy okay with the previous experience and all the sales will draw for the company the business will go out of line for the company who is selling the tvs in the market okay like that and all okay the poor quality tv will get released into the market if the tester has not tested it so this is how we have to explain guys okay uh what actually testing is okay testing is something like this guys okay so it's in detail checking in all ways and directions before the particular product or tv or something got released in the market is a testing guys this is how testing is different from the normal user checking now let's go and understand what is software is okay let's go and understand what is software software is nothing but a set of programs. So if you have to under if you have to understand software, guys, this is the proper statement I'm writing here. Set of programs, okay, written by developers to solve a purpose or achieve a goal is nothing but a software case. What is software? Software may look something like this, guys. Okay, for software may look something like this, okay, Amazon example i'll open this amazon.com this is what is software right this is what is software okay web application software software will look something like this guys okay the software will look something like this okay so here but internally what is the software it is a set of programs guys. set of pro programs or programmatical language code written by the developers of this amazon company to solve the to solve a purpose what is this particular uh, software is going to solve a uh, solve a purpose or what is the purpose of that uh, software and what is, what is the goal of this software this amazon software is a software which creates a platform for buyers and sellers where sellers can sell their products using this amazon via amazon software and buyers will purchase different products from different selects selectors uh, sellers from this Amazon software. That's what is the purpose. Now you can understand that what is the software with the example of Amazon. You can understand that software is nothing but set of programs or code written by the developers to solve a purpose or achieve a goal. Goal. Every software will have a purpose, guys. Okay. Even uh, a software which is there in the supermarkets. Okay. When you complete your shopping and come to the uh, billing counter, right? The one who is uh, billing you, 
uh, with the uh, for whatever the products you have purchased in that particular supermarket, will use a software, right, to make uh, his or her job easy, right? So the software itself will calculate uh, how many products, quantity, price, total price, GST, tax, everything will be calculated, right? Uh, the income tax and all, uh, the taxation, okay? So uh, service tax or whatever, sorry, okay? That need to be, okay, uh, calculated. Everything will be calculated there, right? And a final bill will be, will be generated also, printed also, and will be given to you after you make a payment. And also the software will allow you to pay using different, uh, you know, uh, like debit card, credit card, phone pay, and many things nowadays, okay? So every software has a purpose, like supermarket software has a purpose, Amazon.com software has a purpose, okay? So software is simple words, it's nothing but set of programs written by developers to solve a purpose or achieve a goal, okay? That's what is software, guys. Now let's combine both software and testing together, guys, software and testing together, which become software testing, guys, okay? Both these things will become, okay, software and testing will become software testing together, guys. Here, in the normal testing, you are testing a television. Television is not a software, guys, okay? This is a fully physical product. So you are testing a television. You cannot say testing a television is a software testing. Rather, if you are testing a software application, which is uh, either running on the browser, which may be web application or desktop application or mobile application, right? Testing a particular software of that particular uh, software, uh, software uh, it may be web or desktop or mobile application type of softwares, right? Such kind of testing is called as software testing, guys, okay? The same testing performed on the software, okay, is called as software testing. Guys. Hope you understood what is software testing now, okay? The first point is completed, guys, but uh, I have a few more things to cover, okay? So, which will not take much time. So, so, be with me. How testing is performed manually, guys, okay? So, generally, software testers will perform testing manually, guys, without using any automation tools. They will perform uh, testing in a manual way. So, how testing is performed manually, I'll tell you. So here, the software testers will create, okay, will create some test cases in a document like this in Excel file, or if they have any test management tools, they will create the test cases there itself on the application software kind of thing. But here, traditionally, people create the test cases in Excel sheet like this, okay? So for uh, different functionalities of this particular application, for example, if I'm testing this application, tutorialsinger.com slash demo application, you see here, register, register related test cases are there. So the testers will write this kind of test cases, guys, okay? So we have to go to the register page, open the application any browser, click on the My Account drop menu, click on the register, and once we navigate to the register page, enter new account details into the mandatory fields, enter new account details into the mandatory fields, like this, okay? Enter some new, uh, you know, account details into this uh, mandatory fields. and give some password. All these are mandatory fields, you see, first name, last name, hashtag symbols are mandatory fields. Give some password. And select privacy policy here, with, uh, just uh, say privacy policy field, then click on continue button, click on continue button, continue button. And uh, you see expected result one should be verified. Like this test cases, user, uh, the test, tester will be writing in at once, okay, before performing manual testing. Users should be logged in. Yes, user got logged in. Your account has been created and user got logged in. You see, logout option is coming in. User got logged in. And user should be taken to account success page. Yes, I am on account success page. And proper details should be displayed on the page. Yes, proper details got displayed on the page. Then again, click on one more continue button here and user should be taken to account page, okay? User should be taken to account page and uh, clicking on the continue button. Okay, and a confirmation e email should be sent to the registered email address. Okay, so a confirmation email should be sent, uh, but what, what's happening in this application is confirmation is not being sent to the registered email address. Okay, so here it's not received actually. So it's uh, here we'll write the actu uh, actual result while test. You, with the help of test cases, we'll perform testing on this application, guys, and account page, but, uh, but confirmation email is not received. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fail this case, okay? I'm going to fail this particular test case and report a defect here, okay? Report a defect here. As a tester, I'm going to report a defect. This is how the testing will be performed manually, guys, okay? With the help of test cases or without the help of test cases, tester will, uh, by himself or herself, will go to this application, open this application URL manually in the browser, okay? And navigate to this application, uh, navigate to this page manually, uh, uh, enter the details manually, create the account manually, Verify the things prob uh, manually, 
okay so here we are not using any automation te tool tester uh, is sitting before the computer machine and uh, by using eyes and hands of the tester tester is performing the testing okay so this kind of testing is called as manual testing guys okay this is how the testing is performed manually guys so you see there are many test cases here many test cases here right lot of test cases so to complete one round of testing of this application okay to, with the help of this test cases are and on addition to in addition to the test case we'll also perform some additional testing okay by thinking out of box and all but anyhow we are testing manually so if you have to test this uh, application manually it is going to take a lot of time guys right so one time it's okay okay even though it's taking a lot of time one time testing all these test cases for a particular uh, application is fine but in real time that's it that is not the case guys okay what happens in real time is developer will give you some version one of the application okay version one of the application for testing and tester will use this kind of document to use this kind of test cases for testing this particular application okay and uh, tester will report some defects okay so all the test cases tester have to test and you know uh, based on the results uh, we are getting here the tester will report the defects and now developer will start fixing the defects okay developers will fix the defects and uh, developers may do some new changes to the application based on the client requirements modify the application for whatever the reason it may be modify functionality of the application or whatever it is delete some existing uh, functionalities of the application based on the client requirements keep on changing and developers will keep on changing the code of the application and once this task are completed developer will give you another version of the software okay again you have to use the same test case document complete test cases you have to manually uh, execute, uh manually test okay manually you have to check each and every test case here on the second version of the application already you have used the entire test cases you have checked again the version one again tomorrow when version two comes with uh, the fix, defect fixes and all code changes it will come right again the testers have to test all the test cases against this version two and if any de defects come testers have to report the defects now what happens again the developers will fix this defects on another version of the software and they'll give you another version of the software or they may do some code changes and give you another version of the software again the tester has to testers have to complete testing of all these test cases okay and report the defects again these are the cycles these are the test cycles guys okay the cycles will keep on going guys and not only that guys you see in real time we'll have a lot of test environments these test cases uh, it feels like easy but you know in real time right this particular test case not only need to be tested on chrome browser but also should be tested in firefox browser or uh, edge browser opera browser safari browser and so on what are the supported browsers of this application are there right in each and every browser this test cases should be executed multiple times right uh, on Chrome browser, one time we have to run. Okay, no need to worry. We will uh, we'll have a team of software testers who will be dividing the test environments. Uh, one one tester will take Chrome browser and uh, execute these test cases on the Chrome browser. Another tester will take uh, Firefox browser and run the test cases on manually on Firefox browser and so on. That's okay. But still, you see, every time you will get a version, the complete amount of test cases, complete test cases need to be run against this uh, software version, and we need to report the defects. But do you think that much of time will be there? Nowadays, we are in agile world, okay, where you will be given only two weeks of time to complete your task. In the two weeks of time, apart from completing your new things and all, can you run all the test cases? Can you execute all the test cases? That is not possible, guys, okay, which is not possible. So what you are going to do there is, what you are going to do there is, okay, we are going to automate the headache, okay? Whatever the repetitive tasks are there, we are going to automate them. We are going to write the automation scripts for the test cases that need to be repeatedly tested for each and every version of the software. Okay. If you automate them, automatically you can focus on the challenging work rather than the repetitive work. Okay. Repetitive work. You see, testing is a repetitive task. Every version you have to execute the same test case. If the same test case need to be executed or tested for each and every version of the software, that's called as the repetitive work. That kind of repetitive work, you can automate, okay? You can automate such kind of repetitive work. And that's where automation is required. Mainly the repetitive work is required because of regression testing, guys. We generally call that as a regression testing. That means 
why regression testing means this is important to understand related to automation guys you have to understand what is regression testing here you see in version one you have tested different functionalities let's say login functionality logout functionality okay search functionality uh placing order functionalities you have tested assume that in the e-commerce application you have tested all these four functions four functionalities first in an application there will be more functionalities for sample let's say four, only four functionalities okay so what happened was login functionality there were no defects logout functionality there were no defects here in search functionality we got some defects let's say in the version one and placing order no defects so most of the functionalities are working fine except search functionality and what happened was uh after you have reported defects related to such functionality here the developers have taken these defects and fixed those defects and also uh the client requirements keep on coming right the new changes they have added modified the existing things and you know all those things will happen the code level changes happen here and developers have now given you version 2 of the same software again here also we have the same functionalities login logout search placing order for assume assume that these are the four functionalities will have okay in this case the tester you see already the login functionality is working fine in login functional test cases were working fine in version one logout test cases were working fine in version one placing order was working fine in version one but you see search functionality was not working so do you think that in the version two testers have to test only the search functionality only the test case of such fun fun such functionality which are failing in the previous version do we do the software testers have to test the answer is no guys the testers have to test all the functionalities okay why because when there are any code changes happen in the particular uh, software code okay any area of the software functionality some code changes happen that may result in side effects okay in other areas of the software which were earlier working fine so the code changes happened in the search functionality may introduce side effects in login functionality logout functionality placing order so we cannot be sure that these functionalities which are working earlier fine may not work fine now so that means if any code changes happens in the software again we have to test the login function again we have to test the logout functionality and again we have to test the search functionality again we have to test the placing order functionality it's simple like you went to hospital okay you went to hospital and you got uh, you know a headache and uh, you have taken a course from the doctor after completing the course the he headache is gone but you got a stomach ache earlier your stomach was fine okay because of using uh, you know painkillers or whatever the kind of tablets you are using for severe headache and all right that resulted in stomach ache okay that problem was not there earlier right the stomach was uh, good earlier but now it's not it's not proper okay such kind of thing applies for the software also guys code changes happened in one area of the software may introduce side effects in other area of the software and the areas which were working earlier fine may not work now because of this reason we have to perform regression testing okay we have to repeatedly test the things which were working fine earlier along with the things that are not working fine as part of regression testing to see if there are any side effects introduced into the uh, any other working areas of the software properly working areas of that is called as regression testing guys as part of regression testing we have to test the entire test case uh, test case in the test cases document on every version of the software this will uh, this will lead to re uh, repetitive work every time every version you have to repeatedly test the same test cases again 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 okay so much of time the software testers will not have guys to overcome that problem what the software will do software testers will do is they will automate the repetitive work that is there in the regression testing test cases all the most of the test cases that are repeatedly we have to test across every version of the software right they will automate software testers will automate them so the automation tool will run the automation tool will take care of the regression testing going ahead while the testers will focus on the new burning challenges or areas where you know they'll uh, find defects there and you know the investigation they will do and all the stuff okay this why this why guys this how the testing is performed manually and uh, if the testing has to be performed manually and if the lot of repetitive work comes for each and every version of the software that will take a lot of time and that much of time is not available with the software testers that's where automation testing will come into picture and we are going to automate the repetitive work with the help of any automation tool one of the tool we have in the market is selenium guys okay okay we are using some one of the uh, some tools like selenium or etc we have to automate the test cases that are repeatedly test case, uh, tested for each and every version of the software okay 
So hope guys you got a high level idea what is software testing, how testing is performed by software testers manually and why we have to go for automation testing using tools like Selenium and all. Okay, from this session. So this much of basic knowledge of uh, software testing is enough for learning Selenium guys. Okay, you don't have to learn the entire software testing to learn Selenium. This much of basic knowledge is enough. Okay, for learning Selenium. Okay, software testing basic knowledge for learning Selenium. This much is enough. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session where I'm going to cover other pre sites which are required for learning Selenium. Okay, then see you. Bye-bye.